Thursday, November 2nd, 1145 a.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Guys, you know how we're always seeing photographs of the sun um, with what look like objects near the sun? We see them pretty much every day, sometimes even videos. We're going to use this one as an example just real quick. This isn't what I want to talk about. I want to talk about something I saw on Soho, Glasgow C3. But sometimes things um, appear in photographs next to the sun. And this one is mine. I took back in May of 2017. It does look like briefly that there was something behind the sun. And that does appear to be behind, not in front of the sun. So it's not a typical reflection seen thousands of reflections and in fact I've seen hundreds in my own photographs. This one I couldn't easily dismiss because I tried removing it with multiple techniques in a photography program and you just simply couldn't get it to go away. Um, in fact it, it, it became more obvious in the photograph so I don't know what was going on there because uh, it could be nothing and then again who knows maybe there was something there just for a brief moment and it appeared in the photograph but did i see it no i did not but i guess what i'm getting at is there's a lot about space that we don't understand you know i'm a believer in the binary star system and i do believe that ours is a binary star system is it as easy to go out and take a simple photograph of the sky and see the binary star of the second sun no i, I think it's very complicated in fact could you maybe take a photograph and see an aspect of it or maybe a reflection of it? I suppose so. I don't know. I've never seen it. But we have a lot to learn about space, just like we have a lot to learn about Earth yet. A new life form was just discovered in the Grand Canyon. So if we've got everything all figured out, why did we just discover a life form, a new life form, in the Grand Canyon, 220 miles north of me? New life forms yellow and purple organisms living in caverns under the Grand Canyon with no light and no water. But they are alive and well, and they're trying to figure out how they, they've survived for millions of years, and that's what they're prospecting right now. Um, and they are being studied at the Arizona State University and Northern Arizona University. This story came out October 30th, by the, uh, by the way, three days ago. So new life forms just discovered. So... We still haven't figured out our planet yet, so I doubt very seriously that we've got a cognitive, complete understanding of the sun and everything around the sun. I doubt it. But here's what I found on Soho that was kind of interesting. Right there. Did you see it? It was only there for a second. And in fact, that's what this is. It's a collection of still images. You get five seconds per hour. You get one image every 12 minutes so this is by no means real time so you're never really going to figure out too much by uh, looking at this spacecraft it's really cool it's a spacecraft that orbits the sun with the earth so our view through this spacecraft's eyes is from earth basically this is kind of behind the earth looking at the sun this is an opaque disk that blocks the direct sunlight and you can see this um, is a planet this is mercury and as light um, comes off of the orb, in this case Mercury, it leaves what the camera perceives as light saturation. And that happens when planets transit behind the sun because they become an easy target for the light to find. When the planets transit in front of the sun, between the Earth, the spacecraft, and the sun, you're seeing the backside of the planet, so you don't see that much light. In this case, the planet is behind the sun. Something appears in between these solar flares right there. That CME appeared to illuminate something, or there was something there for a brief moment in time. Just like that. could have Something could have been there for a brief moment of time. Because we can figure out that with this object, whatever it was, I'm going to reverse it and take it back to the moment it appeared in the camera. It was at 18.30. See the time? There it is. See how the light is controlled? I call that compressed light when it's compressed down into a dedicated beam. That's at least how the camera perceives the light, just like it does off of a planet. Same thing. Controlled light. Controlled light. 
This is free light. It's free to roam. It goes anywhere it wants. That is controlled light. It comes off of a sphere. It comes off of a sphere. At least that's how the camera perceives it. But it was visible at 1830. You go back another 12 minutes and it wasn't there. So then we go back forward another 12 minutes to 1830. It's there. Step it forward again. One frame. 12 minutes. It's gone. So there was a 24 minute time frame that it could have been there, but we just didn't see it because we don't have access to that uh, imagery. You step it forward to 1830 and it's there. So could something have appeared there rather quickly? I suppose so. We just discovered a giant planet that orbits a smaller star that orbits the planet, I'm sorry, orbits the star once every 2.6 days. And prior to discovering that, that was impossible. <laughs> I just did a story about it a couple days ago. They just discovered the impossible yet again. So is this possible? Of course it is. Because right now it's impossible until they prove it true. But in order for light to become condensed into a beam, that's how this camera perceives it, it has to come off of something, not nothing. This is nothing. This light is control, uh, free to roam. Free light, forced light. Okay, so is there something there? I don't know. It kind of looks like it. This is a couple of years old, but we've been seeing pictures of the sun with something potentially next to it for 10 years, many years. So this isn't that old, but it does show something potentially next to the sun, even if it's just for a brief moment. Because remember, we just discovered a planet that orbits a smaller star, which was impossible until just a few days ago. Um, and it orbits once every 2.6 days. So if this is something, I don't know what it is. I'm not claiming to know what it is. I'm just sharing it with you guys. Um, here's a black and white still of it. Up close, you can see it's definitely condensing a light. And the camera is uh, producing what is known as light saturation. And that usually comes from a condensed, very intense point of light. There it goes does look like there might be some activity above it and behind it simply because you don't see it anywhere else just up in here there's a real good close-up of it I'm going to show you a little video I did of it and then that's that but I found it kind of interesting don't know what it is though here we go I've got it in slow motion and I go in real tight so you can get a good look at it there it was was again and, you know it's just a brief second of a much bigger picture there it goes again and I know that there's some experts out there that have this camera and everything that this camera sees um, completely figured out and they'll let us know in the comments of the of this video just watch but I'm not an expert I am a uh, apprentice I'm always in the learning stages there it goes again right there but I do know there's some experts that will get me straightened out. But see how Mercury, the forced light, comes off in the, in the shape of a beam according to the camera? And that's what happens here. This instrument is detecting a very bright controlled light, just like it does there off of Mercury. The rest of the light freely roams. You're going to see it again here. This is inverted into neg negative format, just for viewing purposes. It's even hard to stop it on. I've got it in slow motion. This is like 75% slow motion. There you go. Something briefly sent the light, just like a planet does. Horizontally, it's in a perfectly straight line. And it looks kind of big. Whether it is or not, I have no idea. It does look like there's some activity behind it. One, two, three, four. That's a four tier. That's about as big as Jupiter. When Jupiter transits behind the sun and it reflects a lot of light, you get a big saturation point. And that's what this is showing. It's showing much bigger, uh, much bigger saturation signature than Mercury does because Mercury is kind of small. So that looks bigger. If it is anything, I don't know what it is. 
it's just interesting that's all you don't normally see that associated with free roaming energy from a CME that doesn't le doesn't normally appear just, the CME normally just disperses away from the the Sun and, and in this case this was a 360 degree CME went in all directions and you don't see that anywhere else but right there at the 10 o'clock position so I found that interesting wanted to pass that along and that goes back to April 14th of 2015 thanks for watching guys have a super day talk to you soon be safe out there